But what do you say to the people, the cynics, the, the you know, the people who would look at the psychedelic experiences and say, okay, you are glorifying and and you're over exaggerating what's essentially a hallucination. Your visual cortex is being bombarded with these foreign chemicals. You're seeing things that aren't there. And all this is is just your your brain's need to make something profound out of what's essentially a malfunction, a malfunction of your 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 thinking, a malfunction of your visuals, and you've sort of attached all this importance to it after the experience is over. Well, that, that's the cynical point. Of yeah, view, right? that's the cynical point of view. But to that, I would reply that you know what we call ordinary reality, ordinary consciousness, uh, even consensus reality, is essentially a hallucination. I mean, right, the reason drugs work is because we're made of drugs. You know, and whether or not we're on drugs or not, our brains are creating, you know, this reality, which, which we know does not resemble the real world, whatever that is. I mean, the instruments of our physics and so on tell us that the world is a quantum world that's full of vibration. That it doesn't look anything like this. And that atoms you know? are so we, mostly hollow. Our, a lot of what our brain does is synthesize a, a hallucination, essentially, create a model of the world that we proceed to live in. You know, I mean, the world that we, you and I share and everyone shared, this is a model of the world. This is a, a model reality, not the real reality. The real reality is completely unknowable and will always remain so. So for people to say, well, you've just, yeah, you've disturbed your brain chemistry in a novel way and you've, you've tuned into a different channel, essentially, but you're still working with a model, whether it's a model of the world experienced through the lens of a drug or whether it's experienced through the lens of you know sober conscious perception it's still a biochemical artifact in a sense our brains create this we live inside of it you know and uh, that's so so that's what i would say to those people that it's not that you know, there is some kind of objective reality which we're immersed in when we're not on drugs. It's more that we're on drugs all the time, you know. Our brain is a organ that happens to churn out drugs, <laughs> you know, which we call neurotransmitters yeah. and hormones, and that's what our brains run on. So all all you do when you take an external drug is you tweak one or more of those sets of receptors that the neurons are talking to and you know you get a slightly distorted signal from what we what we have come to accept as ordinary reality. There is no ordinary reality or we don't know what it is. We it's it's forever unknowable in terms of our subjective experience. There's a very does strange. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yeah. There's a very strange desire to um, discount something that uh, you can't like put on a scale. You can't like can't bring it back and show it to someone. But essentially, most of what you experience in your everyday life is just that. It's just an experience. You're seeing things. You're feeling things. Right. You're traveling. You're taking in information. But we have this real need. Uh, a lot of people do to discount the things that happen to discount the the vision of the psychedelic experience the hallucinations the the visuals the 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 profound impact and the sounds even though those are experiences that you are taking in as an individual mm -hmm. as a human being as an entity you're taking those in they're they're dismissed they're discounted because the, you know you can't you can't hit them you can't you can't paint them you can't you know there there's nothing there you have nothing there you can't that experience although oh, significant to you well, yeah, but but now, I mean, that's part of the the task, I think, is to be able to bring something back yes. from that place. And people do. I mean, I think that's a lot of what psychedelic art does and, and these sort of creative interfaces. It's not that people go out and take psychedelic drugs and never produce anything. You know, those experiences influence them profoundly. Mm -hmm. And... You may not be able to exactly reproduce them, but given the technologies that we have access to, you can come pretty darn close, you know, with multimedia technologies and computer graphics and all this stuff. And it may be that, you know, 
well, I mean, I, th I think this technology is only going to get better as we evolve, you know, toward it. Maybe in 10 or 15 years, you won't have to take psychedelic drugs because we'll have neurotechnologies that just do the same thing, you know. Or you maybe it is that you, you know, you take one psychedelic drug, you take a capsule, and it's a nano machine that will, on demand, produce any kind of altered state that you want to call up. One of the more uh, fascinating. Scary, but also yeah. within the realm of possibility.